As we know with the pandemic, people are looking for outlets to help them through these times, especially when it comes to family members and kids. And Southwest Behavioral Health Services is here to tell us a little bit about how they are able to help you cope through these times right now. Marie, how are you this morning? Hi, Brad. I'm doing well. How are you? Good. All right. Tell me a little bit about SBH. So Southwest Behavioral Health Services, we are born and bred in Arizona. We've been in operation over 50 years. Um, we believe in providing integrated health care services. So what that means is that we coordinate both general health care as well as behavioral health services. We have a vast array of services that we offer, um, several different programs that you could check out online. The program that I'd like to mention today is something I'm very proud to be part of, which is called school-based services. So, so with school-based services, we um, have agreements with several districts across greater Phoenix metropolitan area. And that really allows us to go into the schools and develop established relationships with the schools so that this way, if school staff recognizes that there's a kiddo that may need some extra support beyond academics, then we can step in and we can provide that. And since we already have that accessibility within the school, we are able to connect with the school staff. We work very closely with families. And we also coordinate with anybody else who the family feels plays an important role in that kid's life. So if there's a psychiatrist involved or a different agency involved, we really try to provide that well-rounded care for the kiddo. Yeah, and right now we are looking that this care is so important with them trying to maneuver new things, trying to uh, make sense of stuff. And we know every kid's excited about Halloween, and it's amazing how this holiday is kind of taking effect on kids because everyone's saying you can't get out and do this and this was their way to to have fun and express themselves. What are some of the things that you can suggest for family members to help them through this kind of uh, holiday? Well, one thing I've been noticing, Brad, is since all of my conversations are with kiddos, is we're having this reoccurring theme of what Halloween is going to look like for them. And so I've noticed that the kiddos that have had those conversations with parents, with family members, they seem to be much more excited about the holiday that's coming up. But the kiddos who are still unsure, am I going to be trick-or-treating? Am I going to be staying home? They're the ones who um, need a little bit of extra support here. So I really feel like the most important thing you can do as a parent or as a guardian is to have those open conversations with your kids. Talk to them about what the plan is and really let them be part of that decision-making process. Even if you already have a decision in mind, bring them, a, bring them in and let them feel like they were part of that decision because then they're much, much more likely to enjoy the holiday and buy in to that decision. Yeah, and I know one thing that I've been hearing a lot of people suggest, and you probably will agree with me, is parents, don't you go too much overreacting uh, for this um, time of year where the kids might want to go out trick-or-treating where the neighborhoods are doing stuff and you might want to keep your child inside. It's just more sit and talk and not to overreact so much in front of the child. I mean, am I right with that? Definitely, 100%. Our kids are always looking at us. They get for guidance. They, they want to know. They feed off of us. So our vibe, you know, whether we mean to show it or not, is very visible to the kids. So the best thing you can do is really, you know, take that time to yourself, process it, think about it, think about what you think is best for your family, because nobody knows more than you. And then, you know, have that conversation and, and they know when we're honest. So really just try to be open with them and let them feel like they can be open with you. And, and they may not be happy with the decision, but really try your best to get them on board and really stay positive. And there's so many fun things we can do, and we still really want to allow ourselves to celebrate Halloween and let us enjoy it because then the kids will enjoy it as well. Yeah, and I know you have a lot of resources for uh, people to come to you. So how can people find out more about the uh, SBH? Um, so you can hop onto our website and you can check out all of our different programs there. Um, if you're interested in school-based specifically, we do have a special little tab and you can fill out a referral form yourself there for your kiddo if you'd like, or you can talk to your school and you can speak with a school counselor and they can get a referral in for you. Well, perfect. Marie, thanks for joining us this morning. Thanks for those tips. And again, it is a season of having fun, but as you said, we need to sit and talk about it with the kids. Definitely. 
It's the best thing you can do for your kids. And, you know, if you do decide to let them go out trick-or-treating, just to have those conversations of how you're going to stay safe. Um, are you guys going to wear masks? It's still recommended, even if they're wearing a costume mask. You might want to take some hand sanitizer along. Also, discuss the criteria of the houses you're going to visit. Are you going to just go to any house that has decorations, or are you going to choose the houses that have face the candy out in a safe way or maybe using a candy shoot or hanging candies from trees. Um, you know, so it still can be a really fun ho holiday whether you decide to go out or stay in. Yeah, perfect. I, I thank you very much for those tips and thank you very much for joining us this morning. Great, thank you for having me.